this series of videos, we're looking at Renishaw's Productivity Plus Active Editor Pro software. Active Editor Pro is a Windows-based application that's designed for the programming of Renishaw's spindle probes and tool setters. Its main purpose is for the setting of parts and tools prior to the manufacturing process, but can also be used to help control that process while it's going on. So in the last video, we looked at measured statements. This time around, we're going to look at some constructed statements. Now, to show some examples of that, I am going to have to measure some features just so we can build the constructions off the top of that. So what we'll do first off, I'm just going to switch over to our other coordinate system, our G55, and zoom in onto this area of the part. And I'm going to measure a couple of bores. So I'm going to measure this circle here. And I'm also going to click and measure one of these internal ones. So the example here is where we've got two machine circles that are supposed to be concentric. And actually, we want to set a coordinate system between the average of those two measured features. So we're going to construct a point that runs through the middle of those. So I'm just going to hit OK. So I've got our circles there, so that's great. I'm now going to click on the constructed point to add that into the program. So I'm just going to click OK to close that dialog for now. Now, with any of these constructed features, in order to reference the measured features, what we have to do is we have to click them and drag them on to the constructed feature. So to do that, I'm just going to select the first circle, then I'm going to hold shift and select the second, and I'm going to left click and hold that and drag that onto the construction. So we can see that's worked because we've now got these reference statements here, these child statements, showing that that's worked. <clears throat> OK, so if I click on the constructed point, uh, we can see some information here. The construction method is the midpoint between these positions. And actually, if I zoom in, what you will see now is a toolpath there. So we can see this red line. So the top and bottom red dots are the centers of our two measured circles. So this blue one's at the midpoint. Now, there is no metrology information for Z when you're measuring a circle, so this is just the nominal difference. But obviously, the X and Y, we could use that because that's a calculated average center point, and we could use that to maybe update a coordinate system, for example. OK, so that's our constructed point. So what else have we got? We've also got the ability to do a constructed line. So for this example, what we'll do is we shall move the part across, and I'm going to pick another two circles. I'll pick this center one here, and we'll pick this one down here. OK. So once again, I'm going to hit the constructed line, click OK, and I'm going to select these two circles, drag them on. Now they're referenced. And what we should see when I click on this line is very faintly running through here, we have a line that runs from the center point of one circle to the other. So this is really giving us the distance between these two features. And what you'll actually see, uh, if I double click on this to open up the statement, what we'll see here, and it's grayed out information from the CAD, but we've got some of the nominal feature sizes or distances, sorry, from those two features. So for example, we have the distance in the X axis, distance in Y, and the distance in Z between those two features. We do also have the total distance, which is the shortest distance from the center point of both of those as well. And of course, what that also will give us, it will give us a midpoint position of those two features. So again, if you wanted to measure two features, find the midpoint and use that to update a coordinate system or a tool offset or just report on it, this is how you would do it. Okay, so that's the constructed line. The next one we'll look at is the constructed circle. So to be able to construct a circle, we need to do that from three points that approximately sit on a sort of circle uh, that we have on the part. So an example might be where you've got a series of arcs that don't actually physically make a circle, but you want to measure it as such on your component. So let's take our measured point and we're going to move this across and find some examples. So if we're looking at this circle here, for example, we could measure um, a point on this surface, we can measure a point on this surface, and then rotate it around to measure a point on this surface. So if those were all separate ones, we've got our points, we can hit OK. And as before, I'm now going to hit the constructed circle, close that dialog, select those points and drag them onto that circle. 
So now we can see again this faint line that outlines where that circle is. And of course, what that's going to give us is going to give us our center position and it's also going to give us our nominal diameter. So when these points are measured, that can be calculated and then again set for a coordinate system or reported on. So finally then we have a constructed plane and what we're going to do with that is use three points to construct that plane. So again, using this, I'm going to measure three points on three surfaces that actually aren't connected. So by doing so, that means it allows us to actually construct a plane where we couldn't measure a plane before because each surface is separate. So I've selected my points. I'm then going to choose constructed plane. Once again, select those points, drag them onto the plane. And we can see here, that's the plane that's now been constructed across those surfaces. And again, that can be used for a rotation, maybe to level an axis, or set a Z height for your coordinate system or tool offset. It's important to note, as with the measured statements, this is all the measurements. If you want to do something with this information, you'll have to do some subsequent moves within this program, like bringing an NC update or reporting on them. But we'll obviously cover those in a later video. That covers constructive statements. If this is of interest to you, please visit www.renishaw.com forward slash productivity plus for more information.